Welcome back. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just want to. I just want to try this once and see how it sounds. What? Here's who. Who here's who? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the guy's name. Who? 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 Ga Gao. Ga Ga something like that. Yeah. yeah. From Taipan. I'm good. Johnny? Guess that. That's great. Now, before this gentleman comes out, he is, without a doubt, one of the most remarkable people I have ever met, Mr. Bob Hope. He's in his 87th year. About a week ago, he travels to Saudi Arabia, which is a 20-hour difference time zone. He went over there, entertained the troops. I did probably four or five shows, did a lot of taping, flew back here, landed here one morning, and that night, the same day, was over, I think, at the Century Plaza Hotel, emceeing a show for the Gridiron Club. No. That I don't understand no, at all. No. I get out of sync if I go to Malibu. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just the time difference. Uh, it's hard to believe he took his first show to the Armed Forces in 1941. And tomorrow night, 50 years later, NBC will broadcast Bob Hope's Christmas Cheer from Saudi Arabia. It airs at 9.30. Would you welcome Mr. Bob Hope? <laughs> See? And well deserved. Well deserved. You started all that. Tell me something. How in the hell do you do it? I mean, how do you make a trip? Let me like ask that? you something. Yeah. What was the guy's name in Ve in Vegas? Who who Gao? Who Gao? Oh, yeah. He's got a better job than you. He only works two hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> who Gao? Who Gao? I that, love it. Yeah, the Johnny Carson of, of, of <laughs> like Taipan or something like that. Oh, wow. now, how do you manage a trip like that? I mean, that's a, that's for a young man. That's a, gotta be a tough trip. You just get on the plane. I'm still tired. Are you really? I'm still tired. I believe it. But it's a, a gorgeous thing just to see those guys. Now, the last time you were here, I don't think you expected to do another one of these, no, did you? No, no. In fact, uh, when I went over to uh, Berlin and Frankfurt, Moscow and England in May, I said, that's it. Right. I know. That's my last trip because... Gorbachev and Reagan were dancing together, you know. Yeah. And I said, hey, we're going to have peace. Right. And up comes Madass, you know. Yeah, Madass, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Saddam spelled backwards, yeah, Madass, mad yeah. <laughs> so, so you... I say that? Huh? So, yeah. So you went back again, huh? Yeah. So you went right, to Saudi right, Arabia. Right. You did not, I think yours is the first entertainment show. I know Steve Martin went yeah, over they, and shook They didn't hands. want entertainment, but they invited me. <laughs> <laughs> that can hurt a guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, it was something. I got to tell you, we played the desert. The girls couldn't get into Saudi Arabia. I was going to ask you about it. They wouldn't let them in. So we played, they, they went into the ships off of Bahrain, all the battleships and everything. Wow. Did a hell of a job. And we went to the desert. We went to the first Marine outfit, by the way. Where do you think they were from? 29 Palms. Down in California. You know, you know where that is? That's right next to Palm Springs. Right. 29 Palms. And I said, I came halfway around the world to meet you. <laughs> you walk out of your house. Yeah. And, and some other guys kept coming on over the hill. And I said, they're coming from Banning. <laughs> they got quite a laugh Yeah, they're over there. pretty restricted. <laughs> Well, well, they're lonely and in need of humor. Uh, so, so the gals went on the, the, the battleship. Yeah, they went on the battleship. Okay. Yeah. Uh, did you have to be careful about the kind of material you did? Were you told beforehand? No, no, they, they, they didn't have any problem with the material. No, yeah. no, we, we we did the whole thing, and uh, you know, did all all the stuff about. They're they're, they're mad, you know. About I asked General uh, Schwarzkopf, who's the command. I said, "How do I become a hit?" He says, "Tell him you're the mailman." <laughs> You know? That's never changed. I said, it's not male, yeah. it's female they want. Yeah. Female, boy. There's no bar. There are no bars. They can't go in oh, and get a beer. Something. Yeah, really. That's what they they yell when you do a joke, anything about you know, they they can't eat jello without fondling it first. <laughs> <laughs> it's lonely out there. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. They want something soft. <laughs> and they save the buns from their hamburgers and hang them up in the locker. <laughs> Is that a fact? Is that a fact? <laughs> it's something else. One, one, one commander got up and he said, I want to know the guy, what guy here 
wrote that letter to Santa Claus requesting a broad and a six-pack. Who did that? <laughs> they had quite a thing about that. Did you find that the uh, personnel were uh, in pretty good spirits? Oh, God, it was great. Yeah. It was just great. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, that somebody said they weren't ready. Some general wrote in they weren't ready. I remember. And that was my opening line. I said, are you ready? Wow. Why were they ready? Yeah. And out in that desert, they're all sleeping in tents, you know. Yeah, they're, they're not air-conditioned units over there. They're sleeping on the ground at night, I yeah. guess, just under, under tents. Just tents. Yeah. And when you leave, you know, when you get in the heli... First of all, you don't know where you're going. It's a mystery tour. Right. They strap you in a helicopter with a big machine gun on the side, and they take you to where, the, where you're going to go. And you don't know? You don't know where the hell you are. Right. But I know we were pretty close because there were a lot of tanks and a lot of big guns. And I mean big guns. Yeah. Most of them were pointed right at me. I see. <laughs> I don't understand that. Now, you must have played... I'll bet some of these guys came to you and said, Gee, Mr. Hope, you played for my dad in Korea, or is it possible they could have said, You played for my grandfather... John, don't do my lines. Oh, I'm sorry. Did somebody tell you that line? No! no I was kidding. just thinking, you must have played... Did that actually happen to me? You're somebody in about 30 years ago in a Korea, a guy said, You played for my father in Germany. And then uh, about uh, I, 84 in Beirut, I said, you played for my grandfather in the South Pacific. <coughs> and I said, if anybody tells me I was in the Civil War, I'll have him arrested. <laughs> it couldn't be because I happened to be in Philadelphia with Ronald Reagan signing the Constitution. <laughs> that was a good That's joke. fine. It's like getting on ahead of you at the Friars. <laughs> getting this stuff up front. We have to take a break. We're coming right back with okay. Bob. Stay where you are. We're talking to Bob Hope about his uh, show coming up, uh, let's see, I'm sorry, 9.30 p.m., uh, when? Tomorrow. Following that kitty show. Yeah. The hmm? Golden Girls. Oh, really? Following the kitty show. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, uh, have you checked in with the president since you've uh, been back? No, I haven't checked in with him, but I'll tell you what happened. We took a 19-hour flight back from Saudi Arabia into uh, Washington. Right. Into Andrews Air Force Base. And an hour out of there, he called us on the phone. You're kidding. And congratulated everybody and said, and what a wonderful thing when that was. Because after you take that ride, everybody's pretty well lumped up. You know, yeah. you can't tell the passengers from the baggage. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and he said how, how great it was and so on, so on, so on, so on, which is pretty damn nice. Now, when they drove you around to do I'd these hate, shows... I hate to be him now, huh? That's, that's got to be I a think, lot of sleepless nights. I think he wishes he was vice president now. I would think so. That, that's, it's got to be very oh, difficult. What a tough thing. What's the largest audience you played to over there? Over there? Yeah. 9,000. 9,000? Yeah, we played, we played three big shows. Yeah. Uh, about 9,000, 8,000, 7,000 in there, then the rest were in the desert. And then we played a big show in Bahrain with all the girls. Yeah. And what girls? You got who? Angelian, I know? Angelian, Marie Osmond, Christine Hodge from uh, Head of the Class. Oh, you know? yeah. And the Pointer Sisters killed him. I'll bet. Just killed him. And then we had Johnny Bench, the catcher. Yeah. And also uh, a new kid, Aaron Tippin, country singer from yeah. RCA. Very good. What's we had, the we had a lot of show. What's the smallest audience you played to? Oh, I would say uh, about 100. We played yeah. the fire station. <laughs> what, what, what burns in the desert? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I mean, no, why, no, I mean no. the sand is on fire. What? what? <laughs> no, let me tell you something. There's a tent city yeah. with about a thousand tents. Tent city. And they got a fire station. Yeah. They just led me around and all sorts of, this is the fire station, about a hundred guys and a couple of gals there. Have you noticed over the years, in the last 50 years, that the humor has changed what the guys laugh at? Or do they laugh pretty much the same kind of jokes? I think so. They, they, yeah. do, they do the same thing today. You know, I told about when I left the airport, I ran into this panhandler. I said, I didn't even know Willie Nelson was bankrupt, you know? <laughs> said, but he'll be all right. Now the farmers are going to do a concert for him. <laughs> Do they know what's going on over there? Oh, I tell they're, you, they're, they're, they, must, they must get the news, because I also talked about Elizabeth Taylor and her passion, you know, the trial. Right. And uh, they, they dug it all the way, and I said, passion is, she's caused, her passion has caused a lot of fights everywhere. <laughs> I drank a couple of bottles before I figured out it was perfume. <laughs>
But they must, they must yeah. know because they did a whole, yeah. all, all that. Now we're going to show you a, a small segment of um, some of the stuff you shot over there. You, you're not. Yes, we are. Isn't that surprise? Cool? Surprise! <laughs> Just happen to have it, Bob. Watch the monitor. There's a little excerpt from uh, what you'll be seeing. Tomorrow night. Jay Leno did a great job over here in Thanksgiving, and I think it was awfully nice of Johnny Carson to fill in for him while he was gone. I love Steve Martin's line. He said, just keep talking about Hussein's mistress and his wife will kill him. In America, a reporter who criticizes Bush is called hard-hitting. In Iraq, a reporter who criticizes Hussein is called dad. <laughs> You see what you put on that card? Dead. Dead, you fool. Now, this is the first time I've been here. I thought it'd be fun to bring somebody up, kind of to represent you all. What, what's your name? Dan? Hey, Dan. This could have been you. <laughs> they they, they look in pretty good spirits over oh, there. They're in they're, great shape. They're out of something, boy. Okay, tomorrow night at 9.30 on NBC, Bob Hope's Christmas cheer from Saudi Arabia. I thank you for coming. Oh, I'm happy great to, to see there. you again. Really is. Magic. Well, that's that's work. Oh. That is work going over and doing something like that. And he looks as spry yeah. as he could be. Huh? Just... And look at us sitting yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> we have Richard Ayers here tonight and journalist uh, Helen Thomas is with us. So stay right where you are. We'll continue it.